Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. I want to thank those who were here last Sunday to lead worship for us. Um, I took the day off and my body said, good, I'm going to get a cold. So that's what happened. Anyway, thanks for those who are leading, for who led last week. This is Joy Sunday. So named because many of the readings for this Sunday talk about joy, um, including the reading contained in our Advent candle lighting ceremony that the Kruger family will lead this morning. Good morning. The third candle on our Advent wreath is the joy candle because the Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. The coming of Jesus, our Savior, the Lord, gives us joy. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Psalm chapter 126, verses 1 through 3. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Lead us to give thanks in all circumstances, believing this is your will for us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Will you please join in singing on Jordan's Banks, the Baptist Cry, verses 1, 2, and 5. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was in God. And the Word was God. In the Word was life. And the life was life of all The Word became flesh and lived among us. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you once called John the Baptist to give witness to the coming of your Son and to prepare his way. Grant us, your people, the wisdom to see your purpose today and the openness to hear your will, that we may witness to Christ's coming and so prepare his way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. The 
The first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance from our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them recompense, and I will make them an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people with whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Please join in singing the gospel acclamation. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all glory on you. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all praise to you. Hearts burn within us while you open to us the scriptures. Word of life, Jesus Christ. All glory to you, word of life, Jesus Christ, all praise to you. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is a testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had sent, been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the throng of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. Sisters and brothers, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
Good to see so many of you here this morning. By the way, you sound really good. But I know that you didn't all come to hear me this morning. I mean, let's just be honest. That's okay. I'm looking forward to hearing the Sunday School also. In a way, you might say we're preparing the way for them here this morning. The Bible, <clears throat> excuse me, the Bible tells us that crowds of people went out to see John the Baptist when he came baptizing, even though he knew he wasn't the main event. He was only preparing the way for the main event, the Messiah, the Christ, who was coming into the world. Indeed, John didn't even think of himself worthy to be the Messiah's servant. At least that's what I think he means when he says he's not even able to untie his sandal. It's important to know who you are, what your role is in life, whether you're the boss or the employer, employee rather, the, whether you're a doctor or a shepherd, even though both might be outstanding in their own fields, whether you're an asphalt layer or a carpet layer, it makes a difference. John knew his place and his calling. He knew he was not the Messiah. He had not come to save the world, but to prepare the way for the one who was coming to save the world. He was, you might say, Jesus' advanced man. Most celebrities have some sort of advanced team that goes ahead of them to prepare for a concert or a speech or a rally. <clears throat> I'm sure Garth Brooks had an advanced team when he came. The President of the United States has the Secret Service. John, <clears throat> John was Jesus' advanced man. He was sent not to prepare rooms or security, but to tell people who was coming and why. To testify to the light and to announce the impending arrival of the light. <clears throat> light is a great thing if you're stuck in the darkness, if you're in a cave or in a tunnel trying to find your way out, if you're going to sleep at night and afraid of the monsters under the bed, or if you're trying to find your way in a dark parking lot struggling to find your keys, light can be a good thing. Israel was stuck in the dark. For 400 years, they'd waited for a Messiah so long that they had even forgotten what that Messiah might look like, so they needed help. That was John's role, to help them see the light, even if they didn't want to, even though seeing the light might force them to see their own ignorance. Even if some might mistake John himself for the light and try to extinguish that light, which they did, Still, a much brighter light was coming into the world. And John's job was to call attention to that light. We share that role with John, you and I, as followers of Christ, the light of the world, to bear witness, to testify, to call attention to the light and to those people and places and events and situations in our families, our communities, our world, where we see the light of Christ shining. But how can we ourselves see? How can we ourselves be enlightened? Well, listen to Isaiah again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion. They shall build up <clears throat> the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the dev devastations of many generations.
Where lately have you seen these things taking place? Where have you seen the light? For example, bringing good news to the oppressed. <clears throat> it's hard to think of ourselves or even our neighbors as being oppressed. But oppression can take many forms. Hunger, poverty, being a stranger and alone in a community where everybody seems to know everybody else. Being abused or neglected. The list can go on. Where, <clears throat> where people respond out of compassion, there is good news. There, Christ light shines. The light of Christ shines in those who help bind up the brokenhearted and comfort those who mourn. Rural communities like this one are good at doing that sort of thing. <clears throat> They're good at just showing up, showing up for funerals, showing up when there's severe illness or injury that needs extra tender loving care, showing up to help people that we don't even know in states in far away. When we do that, Christ's light shines. The light of Christ proclaims liberty to those in captivity through prison ministries like St. Dismas Congregation in Sioux Falls and Springfield and through ministries that provide support to prisoners once they leave their cells and go out into the world. The light of Christ shines where new life has arisen from destruction. And you know what that's like if you lived here for the last three years. When homes and businesses are rebuilt following storms that <clears throat> tear more than buildings down, but upset lives as well. It is our role as Christian witnesses to testify to these and other signs as reflections of Christ's light among us. It's our role, too, to simply bear witness to Christ, who is the light. To tell his story, to relay his message, not in an aggressive, forceful, brutal way, but in a way that invites conversation and even questions. That nurtures relationships between human beings and, and between human beings and God. And it takes seriously people's hurts <clears throat> and questions and doubts, because there, too, Christ's light shines. One way you and I can practice this is with our children. Children are rarely going to argue with you, huh, if you talk to them about the faith, about God. They trust you and they'll listen, especially to stories. They make a great audience for our own witness and testimony. And they also make good witnesses if we take the time to listen. Children can see God in ways and in things that we might not in a seedy dandelion or in a single cloud in the sky. All of your children testify to the light of Christ. You who have brought children here today or whose children have brought you are following in Christ's footsteps. As are you who have brought others this morning, grandparents and neighbors and others. The most valuable resource the church has in connecting people with Jesus is you. Just recently I talked to two people who had been coaxed back to church, not by the pastor, <clears throat> not by the beautiful music, not by the beautiful building, but by people who invited other people to come with them. This friend reaching out to friend in need of light and of hope. It's important to know who we are 
and what our role is in God's kingdom. We are not the Christ. It's not ours to save or to condemn or to judge, but simply to bear witness. To testify to what we have seen and heard, call attention to the light, so that others might catch a glimpse of it as well and believe, just as John did so long ago. Amen. Please rise as you're able and sing. And as we sing, the children will dismiss to go get their garb on for the Sunday school program. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our, son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we include Russell Bechtold, a sister to Dolores Heason. As we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. God of creation, you make light come from darkness and the universe from nothingness. Shine through your church that others may see you in us. God of faithfulness, Lord of the nations, enlighten those who lead so they may see and respond to the needs of other people. Remove those who oppress and set the captives free. God of faithfulness. Bringer of hope, comfort those in need of healing, especially Russell. Help those <clears throat> who mourn loved ones to love, to find hope in the assurance of a final resurrection. God of faithfulness. 
Our Father in heaven, surround families during this holiday season. Where there is strife, division, or hurt, bring peace and restore relationships. God of faithfulness. God who calls us, be with those who work during the holidays, that they may find joy in their labors and find time for rest and refreshment. God of faithfulness. Ruler of nature, watch over all who dwell in the path of destruction from fires, earthquakes, and storms. Keep them safe and help them rebuild their lives. God of faithfulness. Strong protector, watch over those who serve in the military, that your strength might protect and your love might conquer the miles that separate them from their families. God of faithfulness. We give you thanks for those who have shown us your light. Give us eyes to see and the courage to witness until the day we see you face to face. God of faithfulness. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with you always. Please greet one another with that peace. I want to highlight a few announcements this morning following worship. Well, the uh, youth group from Our Saviors is serving a soup luncheon. I would like you to stay for that. It's a fundraiser to help them go to the National Youth Gathering in Houston this past summer. Our church council will meet on Wednesday at 6. Next Sunday, there will be two worship services, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning as usual, and then at 5 o'clock our candles, communion, and carol service on Christmas Eve. So I invite you to join us for one or both of those. If you happen to be alone for Christmas, need some place to go to eat, down in April Grub, they're serving a meal here at noon. Please try to call them so they know um, that you're coming and can plan for that. We're pleased this morning to... uh, have a couple of our young people playing uh, during the offering. Ashton Weber and Rayleigh Fagerhug uh, have a couple of duets for us. Uh, God has blessed us in so many different ways. Uh, we give thanks through our gifts and our tithes.
here. I'm here. Star. Red and center. Harpo. Here I'm Harpy. Gabriel. Profile. Ready to work. Leonardo. Present and precocious. Yes, they need help immediately. Are they sick? No, discouraged. That's even worse. My dear, what can we do? We'll have to think of something, but first we should find out about our next assignment. Oh yes, the assignment. Looking at all those poor shepherds down there made me forget about the assignment. When do you think we'll get our orders? We're expecting the head angel to come down from the officer's office any minute. Look, here he comes now. Attention all angels, attention. I'm here from the upstairs office with the new and I might add best assignment ever. You gotta be kidding me. I'm the most cool assignment I ever have been telling Mary, then Joseph, that the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Believe it or not, this is even more amazing. So what could be more amazing, dude? Well, if you all have been paying attention, you would have noticed that a baby was born in the city of Bethlehem. That baby is Jesus, God's Son. And it's time for us to, to make the big announcement. Which important group is going to be the first to hear the news, sir? Do you see those shepherds down there? They're the ones we are going to tell. What? That's wonderful. I've been worried about those guys down there. They're so discouraged. This news should give them hope. So how are we going to tell them? We're going to rock their world by flying right over them and telling good tidings of great joy. Yeah, that was a great plan. Great plan. Great plan. Then Clarence, since you're so concerned about this group, how about you make the big announcement and we'll all call up that big mass choir piece we've all been practicing. Yeah, that's great. That's great. great. Awesome. Now here's the tricky part. There will be a special key to let us know when to make the announcement. You will hear one of the shepherds say these following words. Outstanding, nothing outstanding ever happens here. Can you all repeat those words with me? Outstanding, nothing outstanding ever happens here. Now, remember, when you hear those words, all of them, that will be our cue. Now, can we say those words one more time, please? Outstanding, nothing outstanding ever happens here.
be too negative about our work, okay? Well, this is just great. We're broken, hungry, we're worried about how our job's going to be. And now you want to keep a smile on our faces? I guess you just want to pull the wool over our eyes. Shh. Here she comes now. Okay, I'd like to introduce you to Missy, our new chef and intern. Hi there, Missy. It's great to have you here today. This is my brother, Ernest. He's been down in our team probably for a long time. Other times it can get real dangerous. Lately, a wolf has been attacking the sheep. Everything is going wrong. The census is happening in town, and I hear that folks are coming from all over just to rest or just because the emperor says so. The sheep. The sheep owner is not happy about all the sheep that have been lost, and is giving us one week to shape up. This is bad. Who would ever want to be a shepherd? How now, Oscar? Let's not give Missy a bad first impression. By the way, Missy, this is Oscar G. Potter. And in case you're wondering, the G stands for grouch. Okay, Daisy, let's be nice, please. Remember that being a shepherd is a noble calling. After all, in the Psalms, it says that our Lord is a shepherd. Our Lord is a shepherd, and I shall not want. Oh, my goodness and mercy. That is so awesomely outstanding. Outstanding. Nothing outstanding ever happens here. outstanding ever happens to you. What you're about to hear is the most outstanding news ever. Do not be afraid. I repeat, do not be afraid. We are here to bring you the greatest news for all people. day would come. The prophet Isaiah told us that a savior would come from the line of our ancestor King David who was a shepherd himself. The savior would be, this child would be the savior of the world. I never thought it would be in my lifetime. Well Missy, you sure did not see any night to visit, visit us out here. I don't know who went through all this trouble for this practical joke. 
Oh, Oscar, where's your faith? This is a gift from God. After all, in the Psalms, it says that in the prophet Micah told us that the Savior would, the Messiah would come from Bethlehem. I think we should go find this major and see this baby that was sent from God. Oh, Grandpa, can we go? Can we? Can we? We can't leave our sheep behind and go on some wild goose chase. Settle down, Oscar. I know we never leave our flock alone, but I think what we have seen and heard is God's doing. After all, the Lord is our shepherd. We would leave them in the hands of the Lord. All right, all right. I agree to go, just to make sure you don't take too long. And you'll see that this shepherd, that, this, that I was right, and the, there will be no manger and no baby. Yes, indeed, they seem so much happier. Look how excited they are as they're returning to their field. They're telling everyone that they meet about Jesus. Oh, Grandpa, this has been the most outstanding night ever. I'm so glad I got to be here for the whole outstanding thing. Wow, that's really exciting. I can't wait to tell my friends that the Savior has come. After centuries of waiting, God had delayed our people. I can't help thinking of the words of our ancestor, King David, when he said that, I will always see the Lord near me, and I will never be afraid with him beside me. So I'm glad the words I speak are great words of joy as I now live with hope in my heart. You know, friends, I feel like a completely different person. And still, here we are, still out standing in our field. In some ways, nothing has changed. In others, everything has changed. We can be out standing in our field because Jesus has come. I have hope in my heart. 
I can be an outstanding shepherd, outstanding in my field. This is the most wonderful life ever. We're all outstanding, each one of us. And that's something to hold my heart about. Go in peace, serve the Lord.